One of the most important things you need to do on your farm is control weeds. We talk about it every week. Well, it's gotten a lot more difficult in soybeans because of Roundup resistant weeds. So today we want to talk a little about the options that you can use on your farm to control Roundup resistant weeds. All right, weed control is pretty easy when Roundup kills all of them. And a lot of us got kind of lazy there for a little while about, ah, I don't even need to scout. I'm just going to put Roundup in the tank. It's going to work. And if it doesn't work, I'll just up the rate. Well, guess what? It doesn't work anymore on some of the key weeds that we're fighting like palmer pigweed, common and giant ragweed, mare's tail, and others. So we've got to get familiar with those post-emerged soybean herbicides again and figure out how to make them work the best. And you know what? For most of these products that we're going to talk about, well, really for all of them, they don't work the way that Roundup does. They need smaller droplets and a lot better coverage. With Roundup, 10 gallons of water, great big droplets so we don't have drift, that works just fine because you just need whoa, a few whoa. drops around it. Yeah, I, and I'm going to disagree with you right there, Darren. We still want small droplet size for the best control, even with Roundup. But Darren's whole point here is a lot of these things are they're contact killers. Like let's take Cobra, for example. Cobra is number one, expensive, but two, it can be pretty effective on some of these tough weeds. It's not too bad on ragweed, not too bad on water hemp or palmer pigweed, and it even has decent activity on kochia. I'd say it's the best thing on kochia, but unfortunately, it's not great on any of these weeds unless they're about two inches tall and you get fantastic coverage. So we really like to see in the range of 15 gallons to even 20 gallons of water and at least 40 pounds of pressure, if not 60 or 70. We're basically right back to the 1990s and the herbicides that we had before Roundup came on the market. Now, of course, you could use the Liberty system or the Extend system. That would be your herbicide tolerant options. But for the most part, we're out fighting weeds that we've got to have something else in the tank besides Roundup. So we're talking about options that can be used in any of these cropping systems and conventional beans as well. All right, here's the thing that I always like to lead with when we talk about these soybean post-emerge herbicides. They stink. They're terrible compared to what you remember Roundup to be 10 or 15 years ago, all right? So what I'm trying to say here is, don't get me wrong, they can still work, but you have to have small weeds. You've got to do everything just right. All right, so we mentioned Cobra already. That's got decent activity in a bunch of different weeds. I, let's, let's talk about things that are very specific, like Harass, for example. That's a product that it's very similar to the old Pinnacle, uh, just a little different rate. If you remember Pinnacle from years and years ago, that was great on just a few weeds. Lamb's Quarters is the main one, and then it's got activity on a few other weeds. So if you've got Lamb's Quarters, we're gonna tell you use Harass. Almost anything else, there's a better choice. When it comes to velvet leaf control, and a number of guys across the country are having trouble with velvet leaf this year, we've got a couple great options. Cadet and Resource are fantastic on velvet leaf control. They're contact killers, don't have any soil residual, uh, and you can use either of those on both corn and soybeans. So it's kind of neat. If you're tank mixing it in, uh, you, you, you can use them on either crop, so it's handy. They aren't very good on many other weeds, though. There, there's a number of weeds they can be a helper on, but they aren't good enough to say, hey, at great big weeds I can wipe out uh, with cadet resource. No, but they are helpers on things like pigweed and other species too. All right, the two main products that we see used most post-emerge. Number one, it's Flexstar. Flexstar is now dirt cheap. You just have to be a little bit careful about how much you use in a growing season. Depending on where you're at in the country, it might not even be labeled in your area because of the concerns about carryover. But Flexstar is excellent on palmer pigweed and water hemp. And it's pretty good on ragweed too, as long as all those things are small. The other product I'd mention is First Rate, very good on ragweed, as long as that ragweed is not ALS resistant. So common ragweed, giant ragweed, the best thing typically is going to be First Rate. All right, now if you're in conventional soybeans, the best broad spectrum products are Pursuit and Raptor. They're both ALS products. They're very close relatives. Uh, so you could use either one of the two. They have some activity on grass. They're not perfect, but they're pretty good at picking up some of the escape grass, but they're really good on the large seeded broadleaves, things like cockleburr, sunflower. They're pretty decent on velvet leaf as well. The weakness with these products is ragweed. That's where the Flexstar comes in, or sometimes First Rate too, which is another ALS type product. So, Pursuit. And then all the ALS resistant weeds. I mean, they're not going to kill ALS resistant weeds, which is why most people aren't using Pursuit and Raptor anymore. No, the last thing. Those were game changing products, though, when they, they were, came out because there, so was there wasn't anything quite so broad spectrum. So was Roundup. But the Pursuit and Raptor are hardly used in soybeans anymore, and that's the reason why. But they are very good on wild buckwheat today and excellent on black nightshade. 
Last thing we'll mention real quick, there are some residual only products you can use. Things like Zidua, Warrant, Outlook, Dual. If you want residual only for some grass and some small seeded broadleaves, you can certainly use those, but they will not control anything that's up post-emergent soybeans. Well, there's certainly a lot of weeds that we're fighting in soybeans right now, and Roundup just isn't cutting it on a number of them. So keep in mind these post-emerge options will work if you get the weeds when they're really small and do things just right. Well, one of the weeds that you may be out there fighting is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? <laughs>